Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another little mini PC to check out. This one is from MSI and it's called the QB and it's a tiny little thing, $150, but this is a bare bones kit. And the reason why I'm interested in this is that it's running with the new Broadwell chipset. So this is the next generation Intel chipset. Uh, this is the Celeron version of this. So this is going to line up uh, with the HP Stream Mini as well as all of those Chrome boxes we've looked at, but those were on the previous Haswell architecture. This one now uh, is Broadwell. So we'll see a little bit of a performance increase. I also want to thank Vinny Levo, who's a uh, frequent viewer and uh, always sending me some great stuff to check out. He told me about this and I picked one up immediately for all of you to see. So let's get uh, into the hardware. It's a pretty basic system. Uh, this is bare bones, so you do have to add uh, storage and uh, RAM to it as well as an operating system. So that can be free if you go the Linux route uh, or of course you can put a Windows license on it, which is what I did. Uh, and as you can see inside of here, it is very compact. I had to add in the, uh, the MSATA board here for storage. This is a 250 gigabyte solid state disk. Uh, and I also put in eight gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum. Uh, you can also kind of lift up the board here and see what's underneath. So let's uh, do that without breaking anything here, hopefully. I'm not doing this. I'm all grounded, so don't worry. Everything's okay here. Uh, if we look on the bottom here, we have uh, the uh, fan and heat sink for the Broadwell processor, but it is a very compact design overall. Uh, what I liked about it, and I was kind of misled on this by MSI because I thought you could uh, use it like this. They also have another uh, bottom for it that will accommodate an SSD, a larger SSD. So this is one of those uh, two and a half inch notebook uh, SSDs, and you can put this one uh, on there. It kind of adds a little bit of height to the overall package. Uh, but it does let you use a traditional solid state disk. But the reason why I say I was misled is because uh, you can't boot from that larger drive. You have to actually use the MSATA drive in order to boot from it. Uh, but that uh, additional drive can be used as extra storage. The other thing that I uh, was a little bit uh, disappointed with is the connector. So what it does is it's got this uh, cable that it comes with and you use the standard SATA on the drive, of course, but it has this little tiny, almost like a ribbon cable that connects to the main board and it doesn't really stay on that well. So you plug it in here and if you even, you know, just nudge it the wrong way when you're putting the case back together, it's possible to have that, uh, that connector kind of shake out of it. So it's a little hard to get it all put together and stay that way. And it really, at the end of the day, you can't boot from it anyhow. So you may as well just skip it and just use the, uh, the M SATA disc. So all in, I think I'm about $300 or so on this right now uh, with all the components that I had to add, the RAM, the storage, and the uh, Windows operating system. So it's not gonna be as inexpensive as the HP Stream Mini, but uh, you can, of course, you know, build it to your specifications. And I think a lot of people, if they bought the Stream Mini, probably would upgrade the RAM and the storage anyhow. So now we're gonna do uh, is put this back together, boot it up, and we'll run through a couple of tests and compare it to the prior generation Celeron. All right, before we boot this up, let's take a look at what it's got for ports. You got two USB 3 ports in the front here, a headphone microphone adapter here for analog audio, as well as uh, a uh, indicator light for your disc activity. The power button is right here. On the back, you've got two more USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit ethernet jack, as well as display port and HDMI, and it will support uh, 4K displays. So the next thing we're gonna do here is uh, do our two up shot here and power it up. And uh, the load times are gonna vary based on what kind of SSD you've de decided to install on it, but uh, it is pretty quick to boot up and get right into the Windows desktop. All right, let's pop open Chrome and see how it performs as a web browsing device. And one of the things that you'll see with this uh, generation of chip, as well as the prior generation of Celeron, is that uh, the speed is really nice. It feels really fast and snappy and responsive when uh, you're out browsing the web. So as you're you know, hopping around the different pages and everything, it really does have a nice, very quick feel to it. Uh, it almost feels like a more expensive PC. And the same can be said for the prior generation chips as well. So this is not something that uh, this Broadwell chip is going to bring to you. In fact, I had a hard time really feeling the difference, at least for web browsing, when I was uh, using this one as well as the prior generation devices running either Chrome OS uh, or uh, Windows here. But one of the things you can do is run a benchmarking test and uh, Google's got a great one called Octane. And on that test, you can see that uh, numerically at least when you're processing uh, you know, some web uh, rendering as well as some JavaScript uh, stuff as well, uh, that the MSI QB does a little bit better. It scores 13,079 uh, compared to 11,398 uh, on the Stream Mini running the prior generation chipset. You can also see too uh, how it compares to some of the Bay Trail based devices, which cost less. You know, so like that $200 Asus X205TA 
uh, really scores pretty low in comparison. So you can kind of get a feel for uh, what these, uh, you know, these, these chips will bring you with a little bit more power behind them. Uh, they definitely give you a little bit better performance and you're going to see an incremental improvement with this next generation chipset. You'll also see that uh, in GPU tests also that will run in a few minutes when we start looking at some games too. Uh, YouTube also runs really nicely on here. So we can pull up one of my uh, prior videos here and you can see it does stream up very quickly. I am connected via ethernet, but this does have uh, wireless built in also. It's got AC wireless on board. Uh, you can then uh, of course, uh, you know, pull it up into HD here and get a better uh, resolution and we'll go full screen on it here in a second and you can get a feel for that. But it really does a very nice job of uh, playing back multimedia both on YouTube as well as Netflix and some other services too. And if you actually want to get some work done, it can run Microsoft Word pretty well too. I like to run Word 2010 just because they don't slow down the text input. They've got this animation thing on the new version that just makes everything feel a lot slower. Uh, but here's our favorite newsletter template that we like to load up. And as you can see, everything uh, renders up on the screen very quickly. It actually does a pretty nice job rendering the page as you scroll down. Uh, we can go over here and maybe edit something here. I'll just type my name in. Everything is very responsive as I uh, go ahead and mess up my uh, newsletter template here once again. So it is a really nice machine uh, just to get some work done too. So all the boring stuff like web browsing, email, uh, and Microsoft Word and other similar functions are going to be just fine on these chips uh, as they were before, but you'll get a little bit of an incremental uh, performance increase there. But let's look at something really important and that's gaming. We'll start with Minecraft and see how it compares to uh, the prior generation chipset. Now, one thing that was noticeable to me on this uh, new Broadwell chip is just how much better the GPU performance is, at least in Minecraft. So I'll pull up uh, the review I did of the Stream Mini on the left here so you can kind of see both side to side. It does sometimes stutter a little bit as it's loading in some of the background, uh, but look at the frame rate we're getting here on the on the right with the MSI QB. Uh, you know, in the 80s and 90s for a lot of this stuff, even when we get closer to more uh, complex environments here, it's almost double what it was uh, on the uh, HP Stream Mini running the prior generation chipset. So a Real, real graphic improvement here, especially in overall graphics performance in Minecraft. This is a much better Minecraft experience. You're just going to deal with a little bit of stutter when it goes and loads up a different area of the map as it's drawing it in. But uh, overall, I am really impressed with the, uh, the gains they've made on the GPU. And Counter-Strike Go is also noticeably faster too. Watch what happens when I pull up the video from uh, the old chipset here. As you see, as I'm walking down the same area here in the same game with the same settings at 720p, uh, things are just a lot smoother with the new Broadwell chipset. So I think they've done a really nice job here uh, just overall making uh, pretty much a, a processor that doesn't consume any more power and costs about the same uh, a lot faster than the one that they made about a year ago. Now, one thing that really impressed me is that this is the first low-end PC that I've seen that can run the Dolphin GameCube emulator at full speed. So this is really no compromise here. Uh, it is running just right out of the box essentially uh, at a faster clip than I've seen any of these low-end PCs be able to do. And that's kind of the difference that this Broadwell chip makes uh, over the prior generation. It's just incrementally faster, but fast enough now to finally bring uh, this GameCube emulator to a low-end device and have it be really, really playable. Now, you're not going to see this kind of performance with modern games. I did try running some uh, more recent stuff that's a lot more demanding, things that run really well on my high-end gaming PC behind me. I, I didn't see a dramatic performance increase with those games. So if you're thinking about Grand Theft Auto V or some of the latest AAA titles, you're not going to get there here at all. This is really not... Uh, the kind of device that's going to be great for playing new games, but uh, older ones are going to run better than they did on the prior hardware. And again, you can get into this for you know maybe two or three hundred dollars and have a, a pretty fun little gaming experience without uh, spending all that much money. Let's take a look at its multimedia capability now. So I have Kodi running here on Windows, and what we're going to do first is check out uh, how live television performs on this. And I use something called an HD Home Run, which is a, a device that I use to tune uh, live television from my cable system. All legal. I have a great set of videos on the HD Home Run on the channel that you can check out. Uh, and what we're going to do real quick here is just kind of switch around to a few different channels. And why this is a good test is because this is streaming MPEG-2 video uh, over my network. That's what comes in over this device. So it's a little bit more demanding than some of the MPEG-4 video you might normally play through Kodi. Uh, this is all live streaming right off my cable system. And as you can see, things really function quite well. So that's an awesome uh, set of performance here. So I'm very impressed with that. Uh, the prior version worked pretty well of uh, that uh, chipset at doing this kind of thing too. So that's a good sign. And we'll go over here and maybe uh, browse my Blu-ray library. And one of the reasons I picked this up was because I wanted to maybe hopefully finally find like the ultimate uh, gaming slash 
uh, video playback device, and this might be it. I think we've uh, I think we've gotten there with this thing. So we're gonna load up a Blu-ray movie here. I've got Jurassic Park, which I ripped right off of a, a Blu-ray disc that I own, and I like to just grab the movie directly with no transcoding. So this is like the full 20 gigabyte file, and as you can see here, it really is. Uh, performing very well over the network here. I'm you know, streaming a very large file that I'm able to jump back and forth uh, very quickly thanks to the gigabit ethernet and the overall performance of the chipset. Now one thing to keep in mind when playing back these Blu-ray files is that you can output uh, the Dolby Digital and the DTS Sound to a home theater receiver, uh, but some of the higher end formats like the DTS HD and the uh, Dolby True HD, those lossless formats, I found don't typically work on these Intel devices. So there are some devices that those formats do work with like the WDTV and a few others that are licensed for that, uh, but you're not gonna get the real high end output out of here. But uh, if you do have Blu-rays with the standard DTS or the regular Dolby Digital, even up to the 7.1, uh, those should work fine. Just, be, just bear in mind that the lossless formats uh, probably won't get you there. But overall, I have to say, this is an impressive little box uh, for the money, very nicely performing. The Broadwell chipset, uh, while maybe not noticeable with web browsing and some other things, uh, is certainly noticeable on the GPU side. So there's significant GPU performance increases that we've seen, uh, especially in our Minecraft and in our Counter-Strike tests. Again, not good enough for AAA uh, latest gaming titles, but certainly enough to maybe play some older stuff or less demanding stuff better than you could uh, on the prior generation Celerons, and that is really impressive. Uh, things like H uh, the uh, Steam and home streaming and other things will work just fine on here, and that's kind of what I was thinking about uh, when I bought this device, to kind of use it as my uh, little streaming device that I can plug into a television to play back movies, uh, do some emulation, as you saw with that GameCube test, uh, and maybe also play back some uh, live television too at the same time, all out of the same box. And I think we're finally there with this. And if you play your cards right and get you know just what you need, you could probably build this thing uh, for under 300 bucks and uh, get a really functional system, especially if you do something like using Open Elec or another kind of Linux distribution that won't incur you the $100 licensing fee you'd have to pay for Windows. So that is the MSI QB. I am impressed with it. I think it's a great value and certainly a lot of fun to tinker with because you can kind of configure it uh, the way you want and figure out exactly how much you want to pay to get it working. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.